mention that. That's another area that I believe people have lost their confidence in their own understanding. And no one can raise your child like you can. And so discovering that at the very beginning. But let's go a little bit further in their age, and they're now the ages that you told me they were. <laughs> uh, what now? You know, they're eating and they're dressing and now they're even doing it on their own. You've got them successfully this far that they're learning these things of life, reading and how to feed yourself, what to eat. Uh, and so at this stage, what are you after? Can you uh, see kind of a shift? Many times you're just parenting and you're just doing what you need to do, but there's definitely a shift in, at the, this particular age. So, what would you say, Alyssa, would be something of that now that you're trying to accomplish uh, with your girls? I think along those lines that they can not completely function on their own, but that they can do things themselves and they have responsibilities um, that they have to, you know, clean up their rooms and chores now and different things so teaching them responsibility and how to how to care for themselves brush their own teeth and hair and showers and that's kind of where we're at right now would you say that yeah just um giving them more independence i guess you know you know you can no you can do that yourself now so and that's okay because it's important for them to to learn to brush their own teeth. You know, we don't do that for them anymore because that doesn't prepare them for the rest of their lives. So I guess for me, it's that shift now where it's like, it's another phase that you're entering into and thinking beyond just when they're in your house, you know, like what's, what's gonna help them down the road and you do that kind of in small ways. Right. And give them kind of a, a piece here and there, because you don't want to overwhelm them, obviously, but, um, yeah, just well, that's preparing good. them. Would you add to that, Kathy? Do you have, uh... Yeah, I think in addition to um, helping them as individuals establish who they are um, within the family unit, I think for us, helping them realize a sense of community and how they play into that community is really important. I don't... I don't remember being taught that. Like I don't remember recognizing my impact in my school or in Flagstaff. And I think if we can give kids a greater sense of that at a younger age and how important they are to not just their family, but their friends, of course, but also the larger community, I think that, I think it would help them realize they can have a bigger impact than. Do you have any kind do. of examples how you do that? Um, I think it's more of just a lot talking. of talking yeah. through things mm -hmm. about how their decision may affect somebody else, how it affects our family, but how it could affect other people or pointing things out in the community. Mm -hmm. um, just, I, yeah, a lot of talking, a lot of... <laughs> We have actually yeah. one of the children <laughs> joining us right now. Maybe his name is Auden. Yeah. <laughs> he is now hungry. Instead of an apple. Okay. So before I give an example about how we, you know, show community um, through just talk, other than just uh, talking to them, is as they get older, one of the things that as a parent I'm learning to do that I've realized is to let go of control. Mm -hmm. As myself those who know me i like to be in control oh, really? um, i like I things to, <laughs> to go the way i we think they should go they expect them to go and so when jl our oldest she wants to do things like brush her teeth or take a shower by herself wash her hair by herself make toast or little things in the kitchen um i'm, I, I'm not I, I think it's, it's hard for me just to be like well okay uh, but i've i've done better i i at home, she can take a shower by herself. She knows how. Um, she can brush her teeth. I haven't really brushed her teeth in a long time. So, 
so that's one thing before we got in Korea that I wanted to talk about um, as they got older that I recognized in myself was I have to be okay with letting go. Well, if you saying you got to let go, which is it seems to be a process from the beginning of cutting an umbilical cord to the <laughs> time that they learn how to crawl, walk, you're slowly releasing them from your hands-on. So, as you said, Eric, to lose control and you say, okay, you can make some toast. After she makes the toast, do, how do you deal with that? Because most likely she's not doing it the way you would want her to do it. So, how do you respond to maybe her setting fire to the toast? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Right. Well, what's a better example for me is washing the hair is because I can show her how to wash the hair and then as she washes it I'm there as she washes it I'm like okay you missed you know you missed your top you missed the front she has a hard time uh, in the front area and washing the hair she gets the back all good but uh, not the front so I've watched her enough to where she gets all of her hair all soaked up washed up and rinsed off to where I don't have to be there all the time so it wasn't where I wash it and then she just does it all by herself when I'm running Wow. I would be there while she was washing hair. Usually by that time I'm drying on and or I'm doing something with my younger boy while she's washing her hair so I can see her actually do it. Yeah. So then when toast, yeah, um, she does toast more with Kathy than she does with me. But I think we have to point out that the reason why it's hard to let that go, this is what you're alluding to, it's hard to let them do things now for themselves because it's just messier and it's more time consuming as a parent to let them make the mess or let them try something and then you have to then go <laughs> do it again yeah. because it wasn't done right and I think that's what I've had to recognize is that's just a lifelong parenting process like our kids need to make mistakes they need to not do things perfect because that's how they're learning and it's really hard because again it takes more time and patience and just me standing there gritting my teeth, right, smiling right. and saying, you're doing a great job. Right. When inside, <laughs> it's just, everything just like, just do it yeah. yourself. Okay. <laughs> and like Auden wants to sweep. Mama, can I sweep? Okay, Auden. And you know, he's just spreading everything out. It's not, <laughs> nope, not effectual, but he, he's showing the interest. He's showing the initiative. So as hard as it is, we have to embrace that because otherwise they are going to, grow up not being responsible not you said this off camera but not being able to clean their house with you know well they would want others to do it for right. them yeah. so that that's very good so yeah. the, the teaching is coming through in a way that it will not be like at school as parents you're really teaching about life so the thing you brought up Kathy about community how is it? Can you give me some examples, really? Because that is important of uh, them learning there are other people in the world beside themselves. Um, I can't think of a great example, but just when we drive through town and they see people holding up a protest sign or see a homeless person, we really talk about those things because they're trying to piece that together in their own world and what that means. Um, and so we just... For us, it's a lot of conversation, um, and of course, talking about how their decisions impact other people. That's huge. I think, especially at this age, they're so into themselves that they don't often realize what they're deciding impacts not just themselves. Okay, well, that, that's that's good. That's yeah. good. I, I like to ask you another question: Is that uh, Ken has your children ever lied to? You? Never. No. Never. Uh, no, haven't dealt with that yet. No. <laughs> Denial. Well, well uh, maybe oh, yes. uh, Alyssa has, <laughs> can't ever lie to you. I'm like, right now. <laughs> well, I think lying uh, seems to be a, a, uh, something they do naturally. Yeah. So when they lie, what do you do? How do you, what do you do with that? That's a tough one. Um, well, you're trying to get them to fess up, obviously, first of all. <laughs> you're trying to, like, dance around it a little bit and see if they want to confess. Um, and that one's tricky, too, because I have to say, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Because you want them to, you want them to tell the truth, but they're afraid to tell the truth because they know they're going to get in trouble. Yes. So 
that's holding them back too. And so in their minds, they're thinking, okay, I could, I could be honest here, but I know I'm going to get whooped. <laughs> you know, I know that's a controversial subject these days, but well, uh, the, there's consequences. There's that. consequences. Oh, yeah. So it's, you know, I think for me, you're trying to try to find opportunity to show a little bit of mercy too, like to, to make them feel comfortable to make those mistakes, knowing they're not going to get they're not going to get yelled at or, you know, there's consequences, of course. You try to make them understand that, but this is still a safe environment to make mistakes too. Oh, so it's, there's a balance good. between, for me, and I'm still trying to learn it, is the balance between mercy and discipline, consequence, all of that. I'm trying to teach, trying to walk that line as a parent so that um, it has the most effect on the child. And Alyssa, what would you add to that? so good well there you go (laughs) I know I just going back to like the community though for us with our girls we talk a lot about like if you did the if, if someone did that to you how would it make you feel and we talk about that all the time of like you need to treat everybody around you the way you would want to be treated and usually that helps them understand like oh because i'll say i'm like if if olivia did that to you would you like that well no well then why did you do it to her Mm -hmm. but you know and i think even as adults we need to ask ourselves that like that's a lifelong lesson that's hard because we are self-centered people (laughs) you know we don't think a lot about those around us so trying to instill that in them Um, And in the same token, I guess, that they also have a positive impact on those around them. And we talk a lot. I know with the girls, like, driving to school, we talk a lot about, like, you know how valuable you are to your classmates and to your teachers and the peace that is inside of you that you bring to this school and to your friends and that you can be a friend to anybody and just teaching them that they have that value now. It's not, I mean, they'll be valuable their whole lives, but that that starts now, that there's a peace in them, there's a joy, there's fun, and their teachers come back and talk about, you know, I love having Tessa in our class because she's just so happy and excitable and, and is enthusiastic about things. Well, those are all gifts that God has put in her, and sometimes they explode, <laughs> and we are learning how to hone those things but not yes. quench them yeah. so going both ways that like you can you can be really cruel and that's really hurtful but you can also be really kind and really change someone's day yes yeah very good uh eric how about lying i know as you were growing up eric is my son and he really didn't lie <laughs> never never either so how do you teach children not to lie since you're lieless I know. It's, a, it's a struggle it's an internal struggle I don't, I don't know what to say um, but in all honesty can't really put it well it's, it's, it's a very tight rope balance because you want them to tell the truth first and foremost and I think that's what we really emphasize with our kids is like I don't care I don't care about the action or why you're lying I'm like what's important to us is telling the truth and if you're not going to tell us the truth you're getting more in trouble for not telling us the truth than whatever the action was that you're lying about so how do you emphasize or how do you get them to tell the truth without getting upset without those huge consequences when they know that could be coming and I think early on I don't know if we really have harsh discipline for lying unless it's a big lie I want I want JL and Auden to tell the truth and so whatever the action is I don't want to come off to them as some scary person when I want them to tell me what actually happened 
Let, let me ask you, Kathy, how do you know they're lying? <laughs> Oh, you just know. I mean, that's, that's a parental instinct. I mean, there you just are some God given gifts Absolutely. that parents have. That, and I, uh, go, I'm going to answer. I'm going to go back to what you sure. had asked. And, and for me, lying is my biggest, like, that's, you can do anything else to me, but lying, there's just something I can't. It's very difficult for me um, to be lied to. And so it's just, that's already my thing. And, and I am you know, gung-ho about teaching our kids, we don't do this, this isn't who you are. So I think what I've had to realize as a parent is I'm not necessarily so um, keen on them admitting a lie. Like, that's not my end game, my end result that I want for my kids is not admitting the lie or whatnot, but I want them to realize that's just not who they are. Mm. So when we talk with JL, because I know she is lying, and um, when we talk with her, if I know she's in a lie, I try to first make sure that my reaction is not so crazy because that is definitely yeah. something I've had to work on. Like I have reacted to things that she has done like it's the end of the world. And I see what that does in her and it does nothing productive. It does nothing beneficial for her as a growing kid. And so one, I try to first make sure my reaction is appropriate. Um, but really, I talk with her and I say, you know, JL, I know that you're not a liar. That's not who God created you to be. And so if you have something to tell me, you can tell me. You know, I'm always here to listen. And um, we've actually had her come to us weeks later. Mom, remember that one time I told you that I did? I did. And so again, I check my reaction and make sure I don't blow. <laughs> and I really appreciate you, JL, telling me the truth. And yeah. there are going to be consequences. But the way I present that is I have to keep that in check because otherwise I'm just teaching my kids to not want that reaction out of me. So of course they're never going to tell me the truth. They're not going to admit to a lie if that's the reaction they're going to get. Yeah. But if they know there's that grace and that mercy that's going to come with a consequence. Yeah. So that's it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That, that really hits at the heart of this thing. It's not just giving out facts but as you mentioned identity that's yeah. the biggest I'm always asked by their preschool teachers because we've had the same preschool teachers what do you want what's your goal for your kids and of course it's the obvious answer is to know Jesus and to love Jesus um, but really to work on that identity mm -hmm. and really instill that at them in such a young age so that you know they're not going to face the same stuff that this world faces when they get to the teen years yeah they're, they're going to face stuff but the way they deal with it because they know who they are at such a young age i think they'll be able to navigate it a lot yeah. easier is there any final thing you would say to one's viewers watching us today as parents uh, anything that might come to your mind and that you would like to share with our viewers about lying <laughs> Not so much about lying about anything you might want to say about parents. Now, don't come to me later and say, Dad, you know, 20 years ago. Anything? It's Any, a pretty broad. Any, anything that you would say about uh, parents? Any, any last thoughts? Raising children okay, is... We have our, our uh, cameraman and producer with us, and uh, she also has a thought about raising children. Raising children is like being pecked to death by a chicken. <laughs> All right, folks, there we go. What we'd like to do is actually introduce to you the children of these great parents. And so we want to have... JL and Olivia come and also Auden and JL. And Tessa. And Tessa. 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 There's only four of them. Okay, here are the kids now coming. And um, the stars. <laughs> the stars. These are the beautiful children that we've been talking about. Okay, start with you, Ken. Why don't you introduce your daughters to us? This is our 10-year-old daughter, Tessa May Becky Simmons. And? This is Olivia June Ellen. 
And Eric, who are you holding? Oh, this is Auden James Weddinger. <laughs> this is JL Charlene Weidinger. <laughs> now, would you uh, kids like to say anything? Really? You really are. Hi! <laughs> Hi! Hi! Okay, well, folks, thank you very much for watching this, and I pray that it's been a blessing and help you in the wonderful joy of parenting your children. Goodbye! Bye!